me close I wanna hear your heart Hello, my name is Asia and thank you for joining me here today outside. In the next five minutes in this video, you're going to receive answers to the most asked question and feel free to go in the timestamps down below if there's something specific you want to look at. For example, if it's about my business and my job or my personal life, I categorize everything down below for you. So in the next five minutes, you're going to have most likely all the answers that you've been looking for when you tapped on this video. So without further ado, enjoy! most popular question I get personally is how do you pronounce your name it's Asia like the continent it's just spelt with a Z uh, my parents are both from Asia they were born there so I guess that's why my mom named me that way <laughs> my birthday is September 15th 1998 which makes me a Virgo and my rising sign for all my astrology spiritual fans is a Pisces and my moon sign is a Cancer. As for my Myers-Briggs, I am an ENFP, making me a campaigner. I am five foot one. <laughs> I know my photos may look like I'm way taller. Total catfish moment, I am very small. I'm a petite girl. <laughs> As for childhood hobbies, a lot of it was creator based. So I love Sims. I love world building games where you can make your own city, your own zoo and create your own avatars. I also enjoyed fashion design. I wanted to be a fashion designer at one point. So I liked making clothes for my dolls, sewing them or making little paper cutout prints and just sticking them on. I'll have like an image here of what I mean. And I also loved creating music. I had a little band when I was younger with my sister and a few of our cousins. And I wrote songs for the band that we sang to our parents. So a lot of my skills and abilities growing up came from world building and using words or sounds just to create new pieces of art and that's why i feel i'm so creative to this day one thing i love to do when i was 12 and even younger in the sixth grade so i was nine maybe i don't even know i loved writing stories and i used to write stories about my best friends during recess and then i put them online on the site called wattpad and then that's when my micro influencer journey started as a writer on the site i didn't write fan fiction i wrote a lot of horror comedy action adventure and those stories went quite big like over millions and millions of reads but i kept it all anonymous because i was really nervous other people would read them so if you could find my stuff online which probably isn't that hard if you tried just don't contact me. Don't don't let me know how you find them because they're a bit cringe, but I keep it up there for nostalgic purposes. And it reminds me of how far I've come and what brought me to where I am today. That, and I'm very proud of that. So it's up there for all the internet to see. <laughs> and read. I originally never had the travel bug. Traveling never fancied me. I just liked the idea of investing and truly embodying a new culture that was outside of my own. And it wasn't until I finished my degree at Dublin City University in Ireland because I lived in Ireland for two years when I realized, holy crap, there is a way bigger world than outside Canada and I want to see all of it. And we only live once, as cheesy as it sounds. So in my eyes, the idea there's an expansive opportunity to see a thousand different things that you've never been introduced to, you've never heard, you've never smelt, you've never seen, like why wouldn't you wanna do that? I'm such a curious person, so that's why I've traveled to all these different countries. I'll just put all their flags and names here because God knows how many there are actually. I've never bothered to count just cause I don't really have a reason to know the quantity of countries I've been to. I'd rather look at the quality of the experiences I've had and really reminiscing those versus how many places I went to because it's, it's really not a race at the end of the day. I was born in Canada and Ontario specifically. However, my mom is Filipino and my dad is Chinese, so I am mixed. However, I cannot speak Cantonese or Tagalog. So I'm currently trying to learn though, um, fingers crossed, but my only language I speak at the moment is English. Things I'm most proud of in life, one, publishing my own book when I was 20, 19? I don't even remember. And it's actually a memoir slash entries of my diary that I wrote in growing up through high school into university. And I 
roped it into this coming of age book for women to feel less alone growing up through heartbreak through cultural differences growing up as a woman of color growing up in a society specifically western where we're supposed to be career driven and our life is supposedly supposed to be mapped out for us which is complete bull in my eyes and yes there are a lot of pressures that go against that and hopefully this book supports you in learning to set your own boundaries whether it's with your parents whether it's with society whether it's friends or relationships and empowers you to truly cultivate and design a life that's aligned to what you want versus what everyone else thinks you should be or should be looking like so hopefully you enjoy it i'll have like an image of what it is here and some reviews from people we also created a book trailer for it which is pretty freaking rad and i'll put like a card here at the top Moving out at 22, because that was my goal, to move out of my parents' house at that age. It was the age they moved out of their parents' house back then. So it was a little goal for mine to move out at that age. So here we are, I am now 23. I moved out in July this past year. Another thing I'm proud of is to be a digital nomad. I had like, <laughs> was thinking that this was something I wanted to do for ages back in university, but I just never, thought about it quite yet because I was still in school so I didn't really have a choice outside of finishing uh, my lectures but here we are now and I'm doing it which is freaking cool and I'll go into how it all happened in the business section of this video. Going to therapy is also something I'm very proud of. I've been in therapy for about four years now and choosing to be so vulnerable and expressing my vulnerability and my healing through works of art, whether it be on Instagram and my posts or my book or videos I create on YouTube. It's very self-fulfilling to be able to express unapologetically an entire spectrum of human emotion, not just the good side, but also the ugliness of growing up, the pains, the suffering, the heartbreak, the trauma, and it's not for everyone sometimes to be able to express these things so freely. And it definitely took a lot of time for me to be able to speak about these topics. However, being able to say I've done it, especially at such a young age, that is something I'm extremely proud of and very honored if any of you who have supported my journeys thus far are watching this. So like, thank you so, 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 so much for bringing me to such a beautiful place of healing um, that is still ongoing. <laughs> As for school, I went to a university in Canada, Goodman School of Business, Brock University for two years. And then I did two years in Dublin City University in Ireland where I worked and I studied there. So my whole program was a dual degree business program where I got two degrees in four years in uh, two different countries. <laughs> so sweet freaking deal. Obviously I took that because I love the idea of trying new things. I can't sit still in one place. I need to be in other places uh, and have a change of environment, change of atmosphere and energy to keep me going, to keep me happy. So this was a no brainer to join. Um, I graduated literally a year ago, a year and a half ago. It's crazy to think that school's over. And also at the same time, I am so grateful it is because I've taken everything I've learned from it and I understand how flawed the system is. So I was very selective in the learnings that I had from my degree and graduated with a 1-1, AKA top of my class, got first class honors. What do you do? This is the most asked question I get from my friends, from my family, from casual people online, because I kind of hint sometimes like, ooh, I'm doing client projects. What I do, I'm a digital marketing consultant and account manager. What that means is people with service-based businesses or product-based come to me and either A, don't know how to use social media, so I do consulting with them or coaching with them on how to do it, or B, they just don't have time to manage their social media accounts. So I create a strategy for them. I do their content. I run their email campaigns. I post their things online. I take care of all of the digital marketing stuff so they can spend their time doing other efficient things in their business. I'll put a few client testimonials here and case studies that you can read about their experience working with me. What's it like? What does a day-to-day -day look like for them as a client? You can go shoot that over there how it started. I've always loved social media. I originally joined Instagram because I didn't have a lot of Asian friends at the time, specifically females. So I figured 
I'll just go online and find some other friends that look like me because I was really struggling with my cultural identity back then and feeling ashamed of being Asian. So going online and making a lot of cool online friends that had similar fears, traumas as me and cultural value uh, shifts was really healing for my journey growing up and that's why Instagram is a solid place in my heart where since day one I've created genuine, intentional, meaningful friendships with people that some I have yet to meet online and some I actually have met online which is crazy to think about but it's also the best experience ever when you meet your online friend. The video got all messed up uh, for this question so I'm going to answer it here. Essentially as a hobby growing up I loved connecting with people online specifically over creativity over wealth over health and fitness so naturally building these communication and relationship building skills with other online friends had allowed me to grow these digital marketing skills from not only a place of love but a place of just genuine intention um, looking to build something with people that actually matters and I truly loved writing about mental health so I wrote little articles about mental health again I wrote my book um, and I put all of that creative writing energy into my captions so I was slowly developing this personal brand of mine where I was known for my mental health posts um, in my captions and talking about wellness and emotions and therapy and really normalizing these things about doing the inner work so with this digital marketing skill set on how to build a community how to talk to people how to really specialize in something you're passionate about i was able to grow these skills with me throughout university so when i graduated i started a creative corporate role and it didn't pay you know the absolute best or anything but it did fulfill me that i was connecting people through art through writing um However, I, I still wanted more money. Honestly, I felt like I should be getting paid for more for my skills. So I saw a digital marketing specialist position in my hometown and opened up. And I applied and I got the job and I worked that part time along with my full time creative corporate role. And my parents asked me if I wanted to pursue this further. And I asked them, you know, what do you mean? And they said, well, if you have five more clients, and as you being their digital marketing specialist, one, you be earning way more than you are in your creative corporate job. And two, you get to be your own boss, you're an entrepreneur, you get to pick your own hours, you get to pick your own rates. So the income cap is limitless. And I thought to myself, wow, like I'm going to be an entrepreneur at 21, 22, like it was around that time. And since then, like I haven't looked back, I quit my creative corporate job and went full force on finding more clients. And now I've scaled my own business where I am doing content creation on the side for my own personal brand. But at the same time, a lot of my income does come from the client projects that I do. And I, it's something I'm so passionate about at the moment. And that's how my job came to be. And here I am today. <laughs> The first business I ever ran was a gel pen tattoo business and <laughs> it was in the first grade when gel pens were in and I remember having my Barbie pencil case full of different gel pens, the glitter ones, the neon ones and we were under this big pine tree and I was always just drawing on my friend's arms and hands which probably wasn't sanitary but at the time, what do you know, you're in like the first grade and over time we'd have a line of kids <laughs> wanting to get Jill tattooed and I would just be sitting there like drawing on people's arms and then the teacher came over and had to cancel my business but overall it was a total hit at the time don't regret it I also had a bit of an entrepreneurial spirit growing up too I wanted to build a charity business with my friends and we'd actually sew plush dolls and sell them and the money would go to the WWF so that was always fun and even uh, my sister and I, we like to do little lemonade stands in front of our Nana's uh, salon when we were younger. So there was always this idea that I wanted to create something, again, going back to my childhood activities I did. So it kind of sp spiraled into business and that's probably why I ended up picking business. Also, it was the cliche that I was not good at science and I was not good at maths. <laughs> so by default, I was like, whoa, I like business. I like talking to people. We can play around with that. There's some creative leeway. Um, but yeah, what do I want to do in life? So if you followed my Instagram stories, you know that I want to do at least 10, 10, 20 <laughs> different things in my career. 
and I also want to live in at least 10 different countries. So far, I only have three, and that is Canada, Ireland, and Spain. Um, right now, I'm hoping to do Amsterdam by the end of this month, and then in the new year, I want to do Portugal and Greece. So everyone, cross your fingers and hope that that's you know, going to happen. I also want to learn um, Cantonese because that's the language that my dad speaks and growing up I did go to Chinese school but I stopped when I was younger haven't picked up on it since but would love to continue that and ideally Spanish so the reason why I'm in Spain is because my boyfriend's here for study and for work and I'm here reuniting with him I haven't seen him in a year and two months so this is me you know making up for lost time but also enjoying this beautiful place in Madrid um, but yeah, my big thing I want to do is have multiple different careers and not because they're just stages, but because again, my philosophy, you only live once. So why not try as many things as possible that make your heart sing, that make you just want to thrive in different aspects of life and meet new people and do different things on a day to day basis. Um, I know my first one was being a digital nomad, which A, we've already started doing. Uh, two, I want to do content creation full time. So that's something, you know, I'm slowly building. We'll see where we're gonna go with it. Three, I'm now a social media digital marketing consultant and strategist and account manager. So that's really exciting. I've always wanted to be a consultant. So I guess we can check that off too. Another thing, I want to own my own coffee shop and studio, but only for a year. I do not want to do it for any longer, just for a year. And the vision is to have this cute little coffee shop, a lot of glass windows, and attached to it is a studio space that people can rent out. Whether you're photographers, whether you're dancers, whether you're creators, um, anything you want to do with that space, have meetings, you can do. And then next to it is the coffee shop. So I've always wanted to own something like that, the idea of bringing people together, fueling people with like warm beverages and delicious treats and foods. Like it's just so wholesome, the concept. And I would love to give it a go. Another thing is I want to be a surf instructor while also work by the beach, whether it be a barista or a hostess. I really want to live by the beach and teach people how to surf. I've only surfed a few times in Ireland, but I really want to get all the way, learn how to do it and teach others. But also like you know like having the beach view and the sunset as i work and i serve people drinks or like foods it could be anything haven't really fully thought it out but that's what i want to do and i also want to be a personal trainer um i really really considered getting my certification this past year however because there were so many things going on with the pandemic with me moving to spain me building my business because it really has been less than a year since I started it. I said, okay, I have my entire life to get my certification. And plus once I get it, I would have to keep up with it and do recertifications to renew my license or certification. Again, I'm really bad with the lingo because I haven't really went full force on it, but that's something I want to do as well. The idea to help people build a healthier relationship with what it means to feel fit what it means to feel strong. I'd love to help curate that and, and rebuild that for others. So again, it all comes down to, I want a life of helping people and creative, fun, and on the go, expansive outlets. <laughs> That's the kind of life I want to live. How am I so bubbly? How am I so authentic? How am I so me, <laughs> I guess? It's the fact that I have done a lot of self-awareness work growing up. And what that means is, could be simply asking the questions, how did my parents raise me growing up? What was it like living in my household? Did they allow me to go out and freely explore different things or were they more like reserved, not allowing me to express myself or really go and adventure out and find new things? and asking yourself, okay, what was it like when I was 14 and 13? What were my fears at the time? What were my insecurities? What did I base my self-worth on? And asking those questions of what it was like until you could say even 18, 20, where you are now. And once you do some deep, deep thinking and answering those questions about how you were raised, you start to understand, okay, this is the way I actually act to this day. It's from XYZ trauma that happened 
when I was 14 or maybe when I was 16 I got rejected by a guy and since then it was because of how I looked or that's how I thought why he broke up with me is because how I looked and this is why today I have insecurity issues you, it's really finding those little narratives you sub you unconsciously followed growing up and really taking the time to piece it together because once you realize oh crap like so it wasn't my fault that this is the way I am it was because it was the way my parents taught me or the way my friends or friends treated me back then or maybe how my partner treated me back then that's when you can start taking control of your life and saying okay I'm now going to let go due to my awareness of you know what brought me to where I am today and now I'm going to take control of my life and decide what I want to do with it because once you have that belief that okay it wasn't my fault that this what this happened this and this and this happened I was only young it is now your turn to take responsibility for that trauma for the situation for you know how you are today and making those changes yourself because no one else is going to do it for you and I feel that's one thing we should really try and learn early on is that stop living your life on autopilot based on how the world wants you to live it start living it on the way that you want to which can be literally anything and i highly recommend getting a piece of paper and just brain dumping all the things that you thought about doing when you were younger you thought about doing recently you know but you've just been sitting on or felt like you couldn't do it or you weren't enough just put it down somewhere and have that be like your next your next step in terms of okay so that's the end of my faq video i hope you enjoyed and if you have any further questions drop them in the comments and if you want to see my next newest episode of my life feel free to click the bell below to get notified and subscribe because it really really helps me out and helps build this empire that i'm trying to grow so i love you all hope you have a fantastic day and thank you for joining me on this lovely day outside bye